Well, welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio 42, and uh, uh, today I'm going to be doing another kind of a landscape. Now, I made an awful quick sketch. Uh, I st <laughs> we stopped for about 10 minutes at best uh, near this bridge the other day. Uh, this is up in Taunton. And as far as I can remember, it used to be called uh, uh, Nick, Nickel, uh, Nickelton Bridge or something like that. Um, it goes over the uh, Tarn River. So um, had some, the name had something to do with Nickel, Nick, Nickel, Nickelton or something like that. That may have been the name of somebody. I don't know where it came up with that particular name. But uh, anyhow, across the Tarn River, uh, 140, as you go out, that uh, kind of the back way to New Bedford. <coughs> okay, now, um, see what we got here. I just want the uh, paper uh, for the sky. And usually, if I do a like a landscape picture, I usually um, wet the paper first, so that the the sky is going to be a softer shade, you know, a blue and uh, not so streaky. And uh, I usually leave a few areas for uh, clouds, which is the white, really the white of the paper. You can whiten it if you want with white acrylic sometimes, but. Uh, it's, it's not necessary. Okay, let's let's get a little bit of that. Uh, they, uh, they they call it thalo blue. It's like a cerulean blue, and uh, it's a nice color. I use it all the time. Some of the other blues uh, they tend to be a little bit darker, like cobalt blue and so forth. But uh, this one seems to work very well for me. It's called thalo blue. Okay, now I must remind you that uh, when you do watercolors, sometimes you m might want to tape the paper down. I, I didn't happen to today. Uh, I asked um, my uh, wife and my son, they go grocery shopping a lot, to pick up some uh, masking tape. I, I ran out of it, and I did have a roll of it somewhere, but usually I used to buy several rolls of it over at Benny's, which is the store that's closed now. A lot of people miss Benny, so you know it was a, it was a good store. You find just about it, just what you're looking for there. Okay, let's clean up a little bit here. Now here's your blue sky going across. You can make it a little bit darker. You can leave some uh, areas white on your paper uh, for clouds. You know. You know, uh, it seems like most everybody now, because I, I, I'm not out there that much as I used to be, but a lot of people uh, have taken up watercolor. And uh, if you do, you'll find that after you get used to uh, the, 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 the color, it is forgiving. Uh, there are certain colors that uh, stainers, like blue can be a stainer. But if you catch it fast enough, you can sometimes see or erase it. And uh, you can give your uh, paper several coats, it will dry out. If you're painting outside a lot of times, if it's a really warm day, I usually wet both sides of the paper so it keeps it a little bit moist longer that way. But the sun, you want to try to keep the paper out of the sun if you can. And. Uh, because it's very hard. It's very hard to just kind of paint through that glare sometimes of the, the sun hitting that white paper. And we've had some really warm days lately, so uh, I usually paint. If I'm painting outdoors, I, I'll have uh, I'll have a chair, so it's, I have an umbrella, you know, over the uh, table. While I'm working, so my paper is always in the shadow, looking out into the light. 
if that's the subject I happen to be working on. My backyard is <clears throat> getting a little bit overgrown. It's all kind of green, but my wife has been doing a lot of planting of flowers, so it per kind of perks everything up. The front and the side of the uh, driveway, they look, they look real great. My wife loves color. She loves the car. Okay, now, because the sky is such, I'm going to paint the uh, water down here. Now, I probably mentioned this is a part of the Taunton River. Taunton River flows through the city, kind of wiggles its way, zigzags and so forth. And, uh, uh, it's similar to what we have in Attleboro, but ours is a 10-mile river. And I think the Taunton River is a, a little bit wider and, <laughs> and uh, longer than 10 miles. Kind of meets up, uh, the Taunton River actually empty into the uh, Narragansett Bay, I think. Eventually, the uh, fresh water of the river mixes somewhere around Somerset, I believe, with the salt water coming in, the tide of the ocean coming up there. Kind of interesting. Now what I try to do is get all these background colors in, you know, the, the blues and so forth. Use a big brush, big, big brush, it's all right. I happen to be using a round today, but you can use a flat brush just as well. And the, these are just colors that you just dab in there for a background, just to have some color on the paper, you know. Sometimes it's easier to have some color in your paper when you're painting. Now that bridge itself is sort of a, like a stonish gray, almost like a, like a granite color. And uh, it's sort of a solid bridge, you know, it almost looks like, the, uh, like it's all cement type of thing. Um, a lot of bridges, you know, there's stones and brick and all that other stuff. But this is Nick, Nickel, and, Nickel Land Bridge has been there quite a while. Been there a lot, since I was a baby, I know that. Okay, now uh, let's we'll see. Uh, I can go a little bit heavier with the uh, blue for the water. Why don't we do that while we're at it? Right through here and around the corner there. It kind of vanishes off in there somewhere. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Now, my style has changed a little bit. Uh, I sometimes do what I did today. I kind of do a little soft sketch in pencil, but sometimes I go over it with a uh, uh, permanent marker. You make sure it's a permanent marker. You could use a, a, a finer marker than I used today, but I wanted it to show up a little bit more. Okay, now let's do some of the uh, along the uh, the uh, bank. We've got this bank over here. By the way, this river uh, right now is kind of lower. And I, don't, I don't know why with all the rain we've had lately, but needless to say, it's quite, it's quite a bit lower, so you see the banks more. And um, that's famous for the heron. Heron come up in the spawn or whatever they do. And, uh, and, uh, Famous for a lot of herring. I'm not crazy for herring fish because it's kind of, there's a lot of fine bones in it, you know, and I'm not in the bones that much. Let's do this side here, put a little bit of color in there, made that a little bit darker. And any, anyways, when we do have a lot of rain and snow during the winter, the banks of the uh, Taunton River do spread out. You have some uh, localized flooding sometimes out on the highway, that route, uh, Cape 44. Uh, 
road. And sometimes that water comes up to the level of the road, which is quite, quite, uh, quite high. Okay, we'll just drop a little bit of color back there. I like fall because it has, you know, it, it puts so much color in, in, into the uh, your picture. That's going to be a, a, eventually this is going to be a fir tree, I guess. I'll just put a little background color into that. I think there's some trees off over and back here, further down. I go today. I I, I don't. I'm not making the false border because I just mentioned earlier I couldn't find my masking tape. I <laughs> somewhere around somewhere. I don't know what, what happened to it. I think I see a roll over there, but it's not mine. <laughs> box of TV studio. Okay, let's just kind of fill in a little bit around here. Go to the edges. A lot of times people leave it kind of, you know, they leave the edges, uh, they don't push, push the color as, as far as they should probably to the edge. So you end up with too much white around it. Go a little darker there, and darker down in here. Put some of that down to here. Okay. So that's sort of like a nickel and bridge. Now, what do we want to do? It's going to be a summertime picture, so. Uh, Let's take a little bit of that yellow. I'll put it over here, put a little blue in it. Yellow and blue are supposed to make green. Even get some green out of this. All right, we'll just start dropping some green in here. I got the kind of a nickname of being a fluid, Mr. Fluid Painter, because I paint very free and loose. I can tighten it up if I have to or want to. I don't have to paint as loose. You can go right up there right up in the air further. I like to have things kind of overhang a little bit. We can go a little darker with that, some of that down. Uh, get more blue into the yellow here. No, get too much blue in the brush sometimes, it don't turn green. It doesn't turn green. That's better. It's got to be a little darker green in here. And it's always a little bit darker, you know, underneath. Uh, keep in mind where the light source is coming from. I think in this case, I'm going to have it coming in from, from the right side to the left. Okay, we have some little bit of stuff, things growing up here, down and around. That bridge has been there probably over 100 years, so it has a lot of growth on both sides um, of the uh, river. The new high school was built right alongside the uh, also the river out uh, a little ways out of the center. On Route 44, you've got the uh, 44, then the uh, Fountain River, and then the high school sets off and back there. 
Uh, it used to be a, a large estate of Bayless's uh, estate. I guess he was a very successful businessman in town years ago. And uh, quite a place out there, the new high school. Well, I call it new, it's probably maybe 30 or 40 years old now. I know the high school, when I went to high school, it was on Washington Street, where uh, Morton Hospital is now. Or, 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 well, they've expanded out to where the high school was. Yeah, nice high school out there. The trouble with the high schools that they used to build, they didn't know that there'd be that many cars, like today. So they never provided uh, more land for parking lots. That's what happened on County Street, you know, with the uh, Brennan the School out there on County Street in Attleboro. Okay, see if we can work some of this into there. What you want to do is see if you can balance, you know, get some of this color located throughout your composition. You, your painting, that color can be repeated. Now if it gets too dark, if you feel it's getting too dark here, that's where we use a piece of paper towel. While it's still wet, I just hit it, blot it, soften it down a bit. Everything looks a little bit lighter next day anyway. Now those look a little bit too much like fingerprints, so what we have to do is sort of erase some of that. While, while the paint is still wet and hasn't absorbed into the paper, watercolor, you can do that with it. It's the trees, they're supposed to be off in the distance more. See how you can reactivate that paint there. I think uh, some of my pictures lately have been a little bit on the dark side, gloom and doom, you know, some of these things. And I, I like to make things a little bit livelier and brighter, if I can. It's going to be the dark side, you know, the light's supposed to be coming from the right, uh, right to left. Some more texture in here. Now, for the most part, everything along the river itself has pretty much uh, filled in and grown in. Uh, there are some areas, as you get further down towards Somerset, there's sort of like a, a yacht club, uh, and they, they, they moor a lot of the uh, smaller boats there. I think my father in law. Well, I, I don't think, I, I know that he used to keep his boat down there. Used to go out, I think it was like uh, 4th of July. We'd go out on the Town River and watch the fireworks somewhere off in the distance around Fall River area. Okay, now, I kind of, kind of fill in a little bit here on the side, underneath. Always, it's always darker, you know, the underneath any of the trees and, and, and flowers, whatever, there's all, it's, they're always in the shade because of the leaves and the flower kind of catching the sunlight but not the other part. Okay. 
you can always touch up. I'm always tempted to put mountains in the background, but it doesn't exist in time. <laughs> I think the highest mound now is the uh, where, where they used to dump the rubbish, you know, the landfills or whatever they call it. <laughs> they look like mountains now. Part of the, uh, the, the ones, some of them are closed. They, they get to a certain height, I guess, or whatever it is, and they, they close them down. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give that a break. <clears throat> now, somewhere I had some paints gray. It's funny because sometimes I could paint the whole thing with one brush, uh, but it's at a point where you, you want to uh, slow down a little bit. Um, some of the areas are kind of fussy. Sort of a, like I said, it almost looks like a cement bridge. So it's a, a lot of gray in it. And it's sort of tall, uh, the sides on it, because the, uh, they do have a, a sidewalk that goes over it, and they wanted the sides to be high and so, and filled in more so that nobody is going to accidentally fall into the river. It's quite a drop. That kind of goes off, disappears. And then it has some columns. The columns are going to be, there's one in here. And there's going to be another one on, along this side there. Okay. Cars are going over it. It's a fairly busy area. You know, it has an, there's another street that comes out in, into here. And uh, of course, all the cars that are going towards East Town and New Bedford are all going out that way. So it gets busy. I'm not going to come back and touch this until it gets a little bit dried out. Maybe we can put a little bit of it going off into here. You see it up there. And it fades into the landscape. Okay. Take a piece of this. See if I can take some of that paint out. Yeah. It doesn't have a, uh, an awful lot of texture. It's so sort of a kind of uh, cement blocks, uh, huge, not really like small blocks that you use, but uh, much larger. Okay, now, while I'm waiting for that, I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit uh, of the uh, uh, d filling in here, right along in here. I don't want to get too close here because that's still wet. Go back and get some, pick up some more of that green again. Okay. It's not getting a little bit, quite a bit darker because we want to show some of the contrast here. I want the bridge to jump out a little bit better. Well, anyways, the Taunton River used to be very active 
get down around the where area, that's where some of the big shops were, mills. And the, uh, they used to bring, uh, the, uh, I guess some of the uh, cargo used to be shipped down to the river, towards Far River and out that way, New Bedford area. So they would have several barges come in, <coughs> come in and pick up things. Especially before they had, uh, you know, uh, vehicles. My dad, when he first started working, he worked for Stanley Woods Grain Company, and they still had uh, uh, horse and wagon horses to deliver the grain. So he was with uh, teams of horses there for quite a while. And then, then finally they switched over from the horses to using uh, trucks. And of course the first trucks and automobiles, they were vulnerable. They didn't hold up as well. You hear, I, I, I didn't realize it, but they used to say, even going from, uh, let's say, Attleboro or Taunton, just down the Cape, that was quite a, quite a trip. And uh, sometimes you'd have to change tires because the tires didn't hold up too well, the, uh, the tubes. And you'd be forever changing tires just on a shorter distance, like from, uh, can you imagine Attleboro to the Cape to have to change your tires? <clears throat> but that's the way it used to be. Okay, now, let's see. Um, I suppose you can, you, you can always add more texture. Now, what, what I've been doing lately, I've been kind of putting in some of these uh, flat colors and uh, letting the paint dry. Then I go back into it with my uh, permanent markers you can't paint into uh, wet paint. You have to let it dry, and then you can uh, you can uh, draw into that once the once the paint dry. I don't know if you've ever tried to use markers on on wet paper surfaces. It just doesn't work. Okay. I'm going to do some more interesting texture down here, maybe. Now, this is if you want. You can make an attempt at adding a little bit of uh, color to it. Right now, we've got the blues, and we've got some greens and yellow, and some of this uh, burnt sienna. But you can, you can add a little bit of color to it. It might be some plants along the, the shore. Uh, they might have some yellow. Just use your yellow straight. You might see something like that. Some different flowers and plants. Uh, now, what I want to do is, uh, if that's dry enough, I'm going to do some work on the bridge. Just to give it a little bit more texture and design. It has sort of like right in the corner here, a little bit of a shadow, like a little wedge you can put in there. Something like this. A little bit of texture. And uh, you can emphasize a little bit of the shadow, you know, coming down. This gives it a little bit more, makes it more noticeable. Now what I usually do, uh, I kind of started to talk about that. Uh, sometimes I'll put, put the color in like this, let it dry, and then come back and, and do a little bit more texturing 
with uh, my permanent markers. Now, I've got uh, some colors, uh, my markers. Uh, I got a few different colors here. Um, you, you're always safe to use the, uh, your black pens once it's drier. I think I have a thinner, finer tip pen here. And um, you, can, you can use color. Uh, this happens to be, I think, brown. Yeah, I guess it is. Now, if you want to put some brown in there, thin, some thinner lines, maybe some shoots of grass growing up, you know, let it dry, though, first. And you can put a little bit more color over here, if, you, if you'd like, uh, in the picture. But uh, you certainly can add a lot of detail. Sometimes what I do, um, if the sky's drier, um, I can take, well, maybe any marker that might be a little bit darker. You're always safe using black. But if you want to put a couple of birds flying, just put some little birds up there. There's always some coming by. Let's put three. I'm, I'm big about uneven numbers. You've got some birds up there. Uh, you certainly can do some texturing. You can make some pebbles by hitting the paper with some dots. You can make this look more like sand along the shore here. And what we want to do too, you can take uh, maybe a little bit, I wish I had a lighter shade of gray uh, with some of my fine markers, but you can use other colors. Uh, you can use, I don't know, maybe a little purple. I don't know if that would hurt. Uh, purple on the trunk? I don't know. Just put it right next to the black. You could try that. Kind of adds a little bit more color. A lot of people, they use the uh, markers if they want to put in some you know, find a detail on the bridge. Make it show up a little bit more. Especially along the, the uh, top edge. Now, if you feel a little bit more comfortable with this, you can use a ruler. And uh, you can go over the uh, little bit with, uh, with a ruler. It kind of brings it up a little bit more. You can have this go off here, use the roar, or use a freehand. Uh, you can put more texture in here, some of the markings on the bridge. Okay, just to bring it out a little bit more. Now this is up to you. You can have cars going over the bridge. You know, you can just show well, the top of the car might be just a roof. You know, you might see just a roof of a car. Just, just do something like that going across the bridge. Um, I, I would probably do more down here and fill this in with a lot of uh, brush. So fill, fill in some of the texture. And you can do uh, some of the texture over here. Um, in fact, I think, we'll try a green, this is a marker. But you can, if it's dry enough, you can even use the marker you know, for some more texture. The only trouble with, um, if you use a marker, it's permanent ink. So it isn't like it can wash out the, uh, the dots, you know, or what it lines uh, because it's permanent ink. Uh, you can do, maybe if it's dry enough, you can add a few more branches, have them kind of go off a little further in here, something like that. You can do a lot of work. You can make the trunk a little bit wider. Down through here, just fill it in. 
that doesn't work so well. That's a wet spot. Over here you can do some more texture on this side. Quite a little extra work you can do. I'm just going to put, just to see if I get, no, well I don't want to use green though. Let's try the, we use black. I just want to do a little bit more of this under part of the bridge and maybe some of the texture in back, what's in back there. Yeah. I gotta check. Uh, I gotta check. It's been a long time. Like I was trying to pronounce the name of the bridge. As far as I know, it's uh, Nickel Nickel Land or something like that bridge. This is another way to go out to. Uh, Hot's Four Corner, you can go into East Taunton. Uh, East Taunton used to uh, have a huge textile mill, and they used to call it, I don't know if it's still operating or not, and, and Anto Antonio Mill or something like that. And, and Antonio, yeah, something like that. It's been a long time since I've lived in Taunton. I grew up there, born there. I used to tell people my house was uh, on Woodford Street. My house was so close to the railroad track. I used to kid, kid about it, but it seemed like if you rolled out of bed, you could get hit by a train, one corner of the house. Is, I don't think it's more than 10 feet from there the rail, really, one corner. And uh, so years ago, of course, they had the old steam engines, and they were noisy. They were noisy. And also, uh, of course, they burned coal, so all that soot would come off. And if you put anything out on the clothesline, it would be all little specks of soot. So that when they, uh, when they, whatever you hung out there white, like bed sheets, you'd have to brush all those speckles off, you know, caused by the uh, train. So, it's not the best idea to be, live too close to the railroad tracks. People that used to come to visit, they'd run outside to watch the trains go by and, of course, when you live next door to the trains all the time, that's not a, a big deal. You get used to them, you know, you don't even think about it anymore, about the trains. As long as you're not out on the tracks, I guess. Okay, I'm just going to go back in here. That's a little bit too dark. A little bit too dark. I'm going to pull that around. You can make maybe some boulders and rocks in here if you want. On the edge of the bank, you know. Put some over here. Something like that. Uh, what not. Next week, uh, I'm going to try to do something with uh, the boats. And uh, I found by using the figure eight on the side, you can kind of get that curve of the, uh, the bow of the boat, how it curves up, you know. Get that angle shape. Okay. Now, if this has a little bit too much of green, um, you can always add, like I said, a little bit of a hint of color. I 
Yeah, I used to have an orange one around here. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, that's that's a little bit like orange. I don't know if you could drop that in there or not. Uh, let's see if I can use a brush. Nope, don't want that one. Boy, that one's stiff. I didn't clean that after I finished. Ooh, boy. Sometimes if you use acrylic paint on your brush, if it hardens up, it's awful hard to get that brush back. You almost have to hit the brush, the, the, the bristle of the brush with a hammer to loosen it up. That one, I must have used that too quick the other day. It didn't clean it. I can get it a little bit back, but yeah, it's starting to get, it's starting to break up now. But you don't want to have to work that hard to clean your brushes. Shouldn't have to. Yeah, it's starting to loosen up now. So it's setting the water. You use warm water at home to clean your brushes and whatnot. Okay. Now, I got that orange out. I wanted to dab a little bit of that here and there. Make it look like a plant. We have some nice colored, uh, what do they call it, lilies, uh, tiger lilies, whatever they are. And uh, they come back every year. Just give it a little bit more color. Put some spots in there. Make it look like there's some weeds or plants on the edge. One thing about watercolor, sometimes you have to let certain things dry uh, before you paint into it. It just gives it a little bit more oomph to it. And some of these things you can pull out. You don't want them to be uh, too, too dotty. It does add a little bit more to it. Add a little bit more, put some of that color up in here. You have to be careful though, you don't get too carried away with color. Sometimes you have to let it dry out, see what it looks like in next day. There we go. You, you get the idea of that. Now, as far as the sky goes, um, that's up to you. Uh, and and as, as far as the water goes, now, if you wanted to come back and show some of the reflection of the bridge, you, you could put that in the water and show some of that color. That's up to you if you want to add a little bit more color to it. Sometimes the overhanging uh, branches of the tree, uh, if they're real n nearer to the water, you might see you might see some reflections on the water with the, the green of the trees. Okay? All right. Now, um, so what, what I'm trying to do the next couple of weeks, I probably showed you that one over here. And maybe I got, I still have a couple of pieces in here. How, um, 
you can, uh, oops, I gotta have one more that has dots already on it. I don't wanna spend too much time dotting. Oh, here's one, here's one. All right. Now, all you have to do is put some little specks on there, use a little marker or something, permanent marker, put some dots. Now, what makes it interesting sometimes is that you can put the numbers in. Now, you don't have to go one, two, three. You can make it look more interesting and more of a challenge. Let's say if I start one and then put two up here and three over here and four up there, five over here, six down here, that's quite a drop. <laughs> uh, seven, you know, you can number. You can number the dots and then uh, if you have a, a ruler or, or, or don't want to draw it freehand, you start with one and you go to two. Now, let's see where we are at here. Okay, I, I see two, where did I put one? Oh, okay, down here. So you, what you do is uh, where you put the dot and the number next to it, you do, you, all you have to do is draw lines up to it. Then you go uh, where to three, from two to three dot. That's over in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. So what you're doing is just uh, taking and, and drawing a line from one, two, three, four, five, six. And you come up with some sort of irregular pattern. Uh, now, if it starts to look like something, but coincidentally, uh, that, that's okay. You, if it looks uh, to look like an animal shape or a fish or a turtle or bird, whatever it might be, that's okay to do that and, uh, and make it into something. Let's see if I can find something here where uh, I can, oh, well, Oh, I can find a heart shape easy. Watch this. Come up here. It's going to be a kind of a bumpy heart shape, but nevertheless, it is a heart shape. <laughs> sort, of, sort of. Okay. See, see how you can make find a heart shape, and you close it in there. It's a, like I said, it's kind of a bumpy one, but you can find different shapes. Now, um, let's see if I can find something else. Well, you can try this one. Looks like a kite. It could be a kite. Now, um, that could be the tail on the kite, something like that. You can add extra little lines here and there. Now also, uh, this heart shape, you can turn that in. I, I, I put an eye in here, right? Here's the eye. You can put some legs on it. Something like that. Put some feet on it. And you got yourself a bird. Now for the feathers, you can go up to that dot, back to this dot, down to this dot, into here, out to here, back to here, and, and you can add the bird. Now. Some of these other dots can become like branches. So you can have the bird uh, resting on the, the, a dot that could be a branch. I can make the branch a little wider by connecting the, the, some dots over here, whatever. Uh, it's kind of fun to do. So you can have some fun with that, uh, connecting the dots. I hope this shows up at home. They just made it like a bird uh, perched on the branch. So things like this, uh, they're fun to do. Uh, another thing to do sometimes, take a pair of scissors and just cut out some irregular shapes. And you can fold the paper if you want the shape to look symmetrical. Uh, I'll, I'll do one, I'm not gonna, I, I won't, uh, I don't think I have a pair of scissors in the box or bag, but I'll just tear something out of here. Ah! I, I went too far. 
This paper tear stuff. I think you're safer using a pair of scissors. But you could tear out some shapes and uh, do this. You open the shape up and all you have to do now is just trace around some of the shape. But you, you're safer to use a pair of scissors and probably a, a piece of paper that isn't quite as heavy as this, okay? All right. So there's a lot of little tricks of the trade that you can think of. Uh, now, um, here's another thing. What you want to do, so what I didn't do, I should have put this brush immediately back into the water after I got through using it the other day. But I probably was in a hurry to pack up. Sometimes we paint outside a lot. But here, uh, by leaving it in the water, we know that it's watercolor because it's, it's back to normal. It's back to normal. If that had been like acrylic paint, that's plastic-based paint. And I'll tell you, once that hardens, it would, be, it would have been a much harder job to get the brush clean again. So that brush is okay again. It can be used again, you know, fine. That's good. But uh, make sure you do clean your brushes. Uh, normally, uh, every so often, I take the whole batch of brushes that I have and I just, you know, fill the sink with a little bit of water, warm water, put the brushes in it, wiggle them around, wipe them off with a paper towel, put them back in my container, whatever I'm carrying them with, and, and go that route. So, anyways, we got, to get, we got this started. I got a little bit dark over here. I could pull some of that out of there, stretch it out across here a little bit more. Go over into here, take some of that paint up from this side, put it over on that side. So you're always thinking about how you can distribute the paint and go from there, okay? So there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, some, some people, uh, they like to paint abstract to begin with. So they just start off uh, just with a piece of paper sometimes. And they'll start putting, uh, let's say you put a shape on your paper, right? And uh, I'll use up some of that orange I have. So you just paint a little patch in there, like that. Now, what you do, just leave that. If you want to repeat that color somewhere else, you can. Now, you can make a line with that, okay? Now, you clean your brush off. If you want to still use the same brush, pinch it out. And you can go to another color. I'm not going to get other colors out today, but I think I had blue over here, okay? So you can, you can let what you've done here dry or you can do the wet into wet. Now that's quite a puddle there. So I'm just going to come down with this color and go into that. Let it run around in there a little bit. That's if it's real wet. Now sometimes you get that uh, hard edge, you get a heavier edge, and then it softens out. Now if you want, you can keep this, keep this lighter by keep pulling it out while it's still wet. You can stretch that out. You can wiggle your paper around. Make sure you have a cloth to cover the table. But you can wiggle the paint around. You can take a straw and blow the paint around if you want and, and, and do some different things with it. Now, I'm, what I'm doing now, I'm taking this blue and I'm distributing it in certain areas. It can be a brush stroke, it can be a dot, okay? Whatever you want to do with it. And if you've got some puddle square going, you can wiggle those edges. You can blow on it. 
or you can use a straw, control it better, and blow on it with a straw and do all sorts of different things. And you can make colors go up against another color. Okay. You can paint some of the background in, fill some of that in. Whatever you want to do with that. Well, I kind of ran out of time here, but I was just kind of showing you some different things. But uh, brushes up, and we'll see you next week. Okay? Thank you.